conoscere, apprendere, formare. Tutto questo è il Learning More Festival. E noi di Radio FSC Unimore lo racconteremo in diretta su Twitch. E quindi mettiamoci al lavoro. And we are back. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here in Spazio F Modena. My name is Pietro Agnati from Radio FSC Unimore. And we are very, very excited to have with us Professor Gloria Mark. Uh, she came uh, uh, yesterday from the United States of uh, the Learning More Festival, and she's going to uh, he- hold a conference soon after this interview. Thank you, Professor, for joining us. How was your trip? Uh, my, my trip was fine. It, uh, it was very easy these days. That's a bit unusual. Yeah after what we've uh, lived through these uh, last years. Well, uh, is it tr- this is your first time in Modern, right? Yes. Okay, and so it's also your first time participating to this festival. Yes. Uh, have you had uh, any way of uh, seeing other uh, events or have you just enjo- enjoying yourself in the city? So uh, right now I'm enjoying myself in the <laughs> city because I basically just arrived uh, yesterday afternoon but I, I was given a tour of the different events, and, and that was very nice. And what I saw was interesting, although I don't understand Italian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that might be a barrier. But uh, you will be giving a lecture soon, and uh, your work showcases much interest in uh, the impact of what digital media uh, has on people's lives and what it did to their attention span mainly. Can you uh, tell us more about what will be the critical points in uh, your lecture without obviously spoiling too much the content of it? Yes. So I've been researching people's attention when they use their smartphones, computers, tablets for a very long time. And uh, we actually started measuring this back in 2004. And that was actually before smartphones. And um, let me say a little bit about the way that I measure attention on devices. So I'm trained as a psychologist, and usually you you bring people into a laboratory and you set up a very controlled kind of condition and you do an experiment. But because our use of digital devices, it's so integrated into our lives, I just don't think we can separate that. So I go to where people are, where they use their phones and computers and tablets. And so I create what I call living laboratories, where I use a variety of different kinds of sensors to be able to measure their attention in the the course of their real lives, while, while they're going about doing the things that they typically do. So back in 2004, Uh, we found that people averaged on any screen, any computer screen, before switching screens, or I should say windows and applications, about two and a half minutes on average. In 2012, it went down to 75 seconds. And then in the last uh, six years or so, from 20. 14 onward, it averages about 47 seconds on any screen. So what are people doing when when they use their devices? They're switching screens a lot, which means they're switching their attention a lot. And that's, you know, for the entire day. Well, yes, uh, that uh, those numbers are actually pretty, pretty scary, pretty significant. In fact, I wanted to ask you, Mm, I was born in 2003. I have been able to perceive the difference from what it was before, my relationship with the digital media, and what um, it has been after I started using um, a cell phone, a personal cell phone, uh, computers more, even maybe for studying. Uh, But what will it be for children that are already born in this age where they do not know how it has been before this 
they do not know what it means to not have a cell phone or to not have an iPad as they grow when they grow up. That, that's such a great question, Pedro, because, um, you know, we're living in a completely new world. And uh, I also grew up, you know, before the age of computing and smartphones, and I would read books, you know, and paper, magazines on paper. So it's, it's just a very different uh, life. Um, we don't know what the future is going to be for children growing up with us. What we do know is that children follow what their parents do. And we know from a lot of research that parents are on their smartphones uh, and we see that children see what their parents are doing and they tend to behave in the same way. We also know from a lot of research, and this is um, probably one of the most saddest uh, outcomes of our digital age is that digital technology is actually affecting the bonding of parents and children. So even starting from babies, we, we see mothers using smartphones, um, you know, when, when they should be giving attention to babies. Uh, we see this when people are on play, when children are on playgrounds, we see this in the home. Um, you know, I, I am a parent, I understand it's hard to be a parent, and a phone is, it's a great way to, um, you know, to calm your nerves. A, a phone can act as a pacifier for a parent. Yeah. And if you know what a pacifier, <laughs> pacifier is what you give infants, yeah, infants to calm them down. So we're, we're seeing children modeling behavior after their parents, and I think that's going to definitely have an impact as as kids get older definitely definitely i have one last question and since we also said uh, something about the pandemic when we started i personally have had a, a significant decrease in uh, my attention span when mm -hmm. i was following uh, my lessons online during <laughs> the covid pandemic and mm -hmm. i do not think that i actually managed to recover the attention uh, the, the pure attention that I had before this, especially when something online, uh, online uh, meeting is uh, presented to me. Is this a bias? Because I didn't like the, the period, I was sad, I was uh, at home, or is it true? Did it actually uh, have a significant uh, uh, result in my brain? <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people are reporting that. So people have developed certain habits during the pandemic. And a lot of those habits continue to this day. Um, it, the, the pandemic really um, created a huge disruption in our lives. Now, you know, consider that during the pandemic, you know, everything was online and people are tempted by, you know, a whole world of information that's accessible from your computers and phones, uh, a whole, you know, people that you can access within milliseconds even. So, you know, this made it very hard to resist, you know, making contact with people and seeking information. So, uh, yes, people have developed these habits. Um, they're very hard to, um, to, to give up. Uh, so you're you're not the only one because I I have heard this quite a bit and and people's motivation has changed as well so it's a very different kind of motivation when you're around people face to face if you're a student you get motivated by being around other students you watch them work you interact with them uh, when you're working by yourself at home it's really hard to get that same kind of internal motivation to to work as when you're actually with other people. Thank you, thank you for your time. This was a, a really great opportunity for us, for us as uh, the radio and the, the, the festival. Uh, good luck, I don't think you'll need it for uh, your lecture. Uh, and uh, thank you, this was Elle. Okay, my pleasure. <laughs>